Hello guys, in this video, we'll discuss Gauss cell, an interesting concept that allows us interior mutability without runtime overhead. If you're someone who loves to discuss lifetime ownership or program Rust like a pro, this video will be full of knowledge as we discuss a problem and a possible solution with Gauss cell. So without further ado, let's dive into it and let's start. And as we start, there is a link to my discord in description. So make sure you join it. We'll start with a recap of interior mutability to better grasp the problem which then we solve with Gauss cell and branded lifetimes. By the way, if you're new to this channel, we have discussed ownership, lifetime, interior mutability and many interesting concepts in detail. There should be some videos popping on your right top. So make sure to click it, watch it before moving on to this one. Let's look at this example. We have a rough cell, a rust type that enables interior mutability with a runtime borrow checking remember this keyword runtime borrow checking and it's useful when we need to mutate data through a shared reference in a single thread so right here we have a five initially uh, initialized in rough cell and uh, we borrow mutable and then we change the value and then we just print it and why do we call it interior mutability because by definition you can only modify a mutable variable in rust so let's say if we have y is equals to 10 and then we do y is 4 it gives us an error saying cannot mute it immutable variable and but if we do this now we are fine because y is a mutable variable but if you noticed in our example x is not mutable yet we are able to modify and that's all because of ref cell which provides us interior mutability as we see in this example right here so 5 is wrapped in ref cell and then we borrow mutate and then we can modify it and if we try to run this and boom it works completely fine and the mod value is basically modified now since we understand what is interior mutability how ref cell works let's build up to our problem so we just modified our example and now we have a read reference and a write reference and we modify the value to 23 and then we just print it. Now if we try to run this and we get a panic at runtime it says borrow mute error. Now remember when we were at the start discussing ref cell I clearly mentioned ref cell enables us interior mutability with runtime borrow checking not compile time runtime borrow checking so basically your program will panic if there are so by definition ref cell can have any number of read read references or one write reference not both at the same time so if we try to change this to something like borrow and now if we save this and let's remove this as well since we are not modifying and now if we run this it works completely fine because we can have any number of read references we can't have both at the same time but we can have one single write reference as well so now if we try to do borrow mute and let's remove this right here let's remove this and now if we run it works completely fine borrow 2 is modified to 23 so either we can have any number of read references or a single write reference but not both at the same time that's the thing with ref cell and if we by mistake end up having such kind of code we'll only get to know while our program is up and running we'll get panic as we just did in this example so we run this and we get the panic so this is where the problem is which we'll try to solve with gauss cell gauss token and branded lifetimes go to your cargo terminal file and add a gauss cell crate or you can simply do cargo at gauss cell so here is our same example of ref cell modified with gauss cell let's go step by step but remember ref cell provided us a runtime panic from Ghost cell, we'll use Ghost cell and Ghost token. Now think of it, Ghost cell as a lockbox for your data and Ghost token, a key that proves you are allowed to access the data. So right here, we just have a read reference and if we try to run this, it works fine. But if we uncomment this line and 
right here as you can see we get a compile time error which says cannot borrow token as mutable because it is also borrowed as immutable mutable borrow checker occurs here so basically what what ref cell was telling us it run time go cell tells us it compile time and obviously we know with rust the compile time safety the the benefits are immense it doesn't matter if you are a pro or a beginner of rust compile time safety helps you avoid tons of errors mistakes and you know uh, not properly use it, utilizing your objects and memory let's also try to understand with a sequence diagram so we have our main and once our program executes man creates a ghost token it could be a different function as well but for this example we are referring to man we create a ghost token and returns token with a unique lifetime which is also known as brand lifetime and then creates a ghost cell with a value holds value internally and when we borrow immutably using the token using the ghost token we get uh, the value so immutable borrow exists and we cannot borrow mutably if we try to do we'll encounter a compile time error saying cannot borrow mutably with while immutable borrow exists that we just saw in the code and then uh, once the immutable borrow ends you can read the value you can modify the value but depends if you have the valid token or not and then you can utilize the value until you want to so that's how a diagram of working of ghost cell with ghost token or brand lifetime works let's look at another example here we first borrow a read reference and then we print then we borrow a write reference and then we change the value and then we print the updated value this is only possible because a we have a ghost token and a b that the reference of x or the immutable borrow is already end here because we are not using x onwards but now we borrow a mutable reference and if we try to run this There you go we get both x and updated value printed like how we would want so basically the idea is gossel ties all the accesses to the lifetime of the ghost token while a branded lifetime is a unique lifetime attached to the group of cells so that the compiler can enforce exclusive access at compile time now think of it as brand or id that ties to your ghost token and all the ghost cells together so only the token with the brand can access all the cells of that brand so this is how or this is the exact concept on which ghost cell works on it's pretty handy if you are working with something where you are playing with you know integer mutability lifetimes enough and things can go south so i would recommend using or even trying out ghost token go cell the concept of go cell on your end and if you have any doubts feel free to leave in the comments i'll catch you guys with another video with another interesting topic until then bye bye